Dwyer, how are you doing today? I'm good, Arrow. Thanks for having me on. You, you, I think you're you're about ready to touch the hearts of every baseball fan in in the world. I mean, because this is something that we've been asking for, dreaming about, because we all have our baseball cards and little things that we picked up at the games. Now we've got a place where we can go and we can be fans of the game. Yeah, I mean that that was sort of the idea is is you know to create a place where people can just celebrate the game however they do it with baseball cards or if they're wiffle ball fans or, or you know. <laughs> Ball, all, all the different forms of baseball for all around the world. It, this is a place where you can come and celebrate it. Oh my God, I laugh at wiffle ball because when, as kids we would have we would play home run derby, and 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 it was it was all about parking that wiffle ball. Boy, yeah, and you know wiffle balls, uh, yeah, they're they're hard to park. <laughs> the baseball hall of dreams. How how long has this been planted in your heart? Because I mean, this is something that had to have taken a, a, a crew of of players and collaborations to make it happen. Yeah, it's. I guess it's been kind of in in the planning and, and realization stage for about a year, but it just kind of came to us like a vision, sort of like, you know, Ray Kinsella. We just thought, you know, Dyersville, the, the, the movie site has been very popular over the years, hundreds of thousands of visitors, and, and, and but rarely they, do they come into the Dyersville town, which is only three miles away. Uh, you know, to, to enjoy this beautiful little town of 6,000 people. And this building came available and it's, it was originally built in 1860, which is kind of just amazing to think that, you know, Abraham Lincoln was president when they were laying the stones of this building. But, it, you know, the civil war era is also when baseball sort of became popular in America. So we thought, you know, why not make this the baseball building and, 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 you know, have a, a celebration of the game here. So we created the baseball hall of dreams, which, you know, we have a collection of vintage baseball mitts that we allow people to, to come and, you know, just go out front and have a catch with the mitt and, you know, make sure and bring it back to us. But, you know, we trust people and, and you know, we've got, uh, you know, exhibits about humor and, and baseball and, and minority players and women who've contributed to the game. And the If You Build It exhibit, which is a, uh, you know, a museum about the making of the movie, they, they took a lease right next to us. So in this building, there's, you know, a couple of museums you can come to. You know, ours is free and theirs is very inexpensive. We have a third museum coming next year and a batting center and a, oh a, a restaurant and bar. So we're just trying to make a fun place for people to come who, you know, who spend some time at the field but want to have, you know, uh, spend a little more time and, and, and you know, ex- you know, learn about the game and, 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 and celebrate it themselves. I was going to ask about a restaurant because, I mean, you talk about a place that better be mic'd because of the stories that people are going to be bringing. Are, because, I mean, I mean, we, we have this love affair for sure, Major League Baseball, but Minor League Baseball as well. And they talk about the stadiums. They talk about the hot dogs. And, and, and we just need that place where we can all gather as one. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, and, and, and that's what we're hoping for. We're looking for a you know, a baseball themed restaurant who, who can, who can provide just that, you know, I've had the great uh, luxury of, of visiting a lot of minor league stadiums across the country. And I mean, I think of one in Kenosha, Wisconsin, that's got a, a boat in, in left field, <laughs> uh, you know, just sitting there on the, on the left field corner. And you're like, you know, what's that for? But, you know, people hit home, run, home runs into it and they, they set up a little bar in it. And I mean, just the most amazing and wonderful things that, that, that make the game of, you know, particularly minor league baseball, so much fun. You know, you talk about the, the, the baseball gloves that, that people can go out and catch in. I, maybe I was a strange kid, but I didn't want my dad to buy me a brand new one. I always wanted the one that was at a flea market or some sort of auction because it was already <laughs> built in. And, and, and to me, it had history inside those fingers. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, there's people now who, 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 uh, you know, wear in your glove for you, you know, you know, we used to do it. We'd, we get it when we got a new glove, which, you know, I'm with you. We wanted a new one. You put a baseball in it, you yep. saddle soap it, and you put it under your pillow at yep. night so that it kind of conforms to the ball. And, uh, and you know, now there's people who provide that service for you. But, it, you know, it takes a little of the, you know, the, the personal effort that it requires to, to make your mitt your own. But, yeah, we have this whole collection of these vintage gloves in the, in the museum that we allow people to, you know, take outside and play catch in, the, in front of the building and, you know, it's it's kind of a it's just a it's just a labor of love to to help people appreciate the history that this this great game has brought to America. As a kid, I couldn't wait until the strings on the baseball kind of broke, and then therefore you had that piece of leather because that gave <laughs> us permission to start digging into that ball so we could get that little cork or whatever it was in the middle of it. That that to me was part of the game. That said, like, go find out what it's made of, see if it really exists. 
Yeah, yeah. So you know, we when I grew up, we had one baseball, so we couldn't we couldn't be that uh, cavalier with it. Uh, but you know, in the museum there, we have a <clears throat> a stage by stage. Uh, I don't know dissection of a baseball, so you can actually see what's in it, and uh, you know, and the same with the bats. You know, it's 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 just one of those things that, as a kid, you're fascinated by, and and we're hoping that we can, you know, kind of answer those questions or, or plant that seed of curiosity with other kids about uh, about about baseball. And uh, yeah, so anyway, I, I appreciate it. I remember, you know, and, and be able to say that, you know, you tore the cover off the yeah, baseball. Baby. That was <laughs> that was a badge of honor. <laughs> and you know what? Kids today don't understand this term, but when, when we said take your baseball and go home, we meant it because there was there was only, somebody had a baseball in the neighborhood. <laughs> take your ball, go home. We'll find something else to hit. Yeah, exactly. Well, and you know, the things that you would come up with for bases, you know, out, out in the middle of the farm country where I grew up. Yeah. You know, it'd be a two by four. Oh, that tree, you know, you got to touch that tree and you know, if you, yeah, you got to run behind this tree in order, you know, like it's, it, it was, uh, it was a, 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 a imagination game as much as it was a real one. And, and God forbid that up, the, up there at the pitcher's mound, instead of going up, it went down because it, it just screwed up my game. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 There was, yeah, we, we grew up on a farm where we, if we had three players, we were lucky. So you come up with all kinds of variations to, to try to make it seem like a real game when you've got three, play, all these ghost players and you know, anyway, it's yeah. What do you, it was fun. What are you going to do when people start bringing things to you? I mean, is that open for people to do? I mean, because I mean, I've got a whole room here full of baseball memorabilia and, and you know, it's, it, but what am I going to do with it? Or what's my family going to do with it when I'm gone? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I'm I'm with you on that. We we had a a, a, fa- a fan of the movie who who contacted me. He had bought a, uh, it was essentially a, a like a closet out of the old Comiskey Park when they tore it down. They had an auction of these things, and he bought this. You know, it's six feet long and eight feet tall, and you know, it's it's this original wood that's from you know, the 1910s, I think wow. that that you know, and and it was in the old Comiskey Park where Shoeless Joe played and. And uh, he's had it in storage all these years, and he's uh, donated it to the museum. Uh, you know, we we have limited space, but but you know, we, there's just certain things that you know you have to uh, you have to make uh, room for, and and you know. So anyway, we're just excited to 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 be that place that that you know people can come and and see these great items that you know otherwise are in in some you know climate controlled storage somewhere. And uh, you know, who knows? You know, Shoeless Joe might have touched this thing. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> That just kind of brings, you know, gives me chills. Do you think the aluminum bat changed the game of baseball at the little league level? Because, I mean, when I went from a, a wood bat to an aluminum bat, I mean, it was like it was, it was like uh, Bob Dylan going to an electric guitar. <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah, that's a good thing. You know, like, yeah, I, I still prefer a wood bat. And, you know, as you were saying, we had well, we had one bat originally and then two. And, you know, sometimes bats get broken, sadly. And, and I suppose that's the only advantage to an aluminum bat is you. uh you know, you can hang on to them for longer, but yeah, I mean, it was such a big deal to, to, to have a, a wood bat and, you know, you know, choosing the right one, a narrow handle or, you know, I don't know. It, it, it just brings back such great memories. And, and yeah, I, I think all these changes, I mean, look at the pitch clock. It's, it's changing the game of baseball. Yes, but, it is. But we, we still don't know, you know, what that lasting impression is going to be. It's, it's shortened the game for sure, but you know, is it, is it, is it going to be good or bad? But, you know, that's, that's kind of, you know, one of those things that, uh, you know, that, that what's great about a tradition as long as baseball has been in this country. I mean, that they, they originally played it without mitts at all. And then they went to these, you know, little fingerless gloves and Mm. then split finger gloves. And then the big, you know, buckets that they have now today, it's, it's, you know, it's all baseball, but it's, uh, it's changed over the years for sure. Oh man. I, I, I still feel the sting in my hand from a ball or the, there's a oh. sting in my chest when I was, I was pitching, got hit in the chest and it's like, Whoa, but you just go, I'm going to remember yeah. that for the rest of my life. I'll never forget that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, who were you <clears throat> yeah. when you stepped into the batter box? I always thought of myself as either Willie Mays or, or I would be Barry Bonds. Who were you? Well, I, I mean, I was obviously an earlier era, but I, I was a big fan of Roberto Clemente. So, oh, yes. You know, if, if, if I had to be in my head and, and, and you know, talking to myself with, through, the, through the giant stadium speaker, it was, uh, <laughs> you know, Roberto Clemente. But, uh, yeah, yeah. And that was, you know, that was, that was, uh, that made the game so exciting. You know, it was interesting. I did a, uh, a celebrity game there and, and Bob Costas was one of the people and he ended up playing for a little bit in the game, but then he went up and, and uh, into the, into the announcer's box 
And so he announced me coming to bat the next oh. inning, and that was kind of a thrill that Bob Costa said it. No, coming to bat, Dwyer Brown, <laughs> start of the movie. Anyway, it was just one of those thrills that I could never have imagined would happen to me in my lifetime. Where can people go to find out more about this? Because this needs to be a part of their summer vacation plan. Yes. Well, the the Baseball Hall of Dreams is the website, and the Baseball Building. There's information on both those sites. Uh, my site is just uh, my name, DwyerBrown.com. Uh, but uh, yeah, we we'd love visitors to come out. Uh, I'll be out there in a couple weeks, and and different times all through the summer and, and I'll be I'll be in the museum itself so if you do make a schlep out there I'll uh, I'd love to meet you if, if I happen to be in town at the time I love it please come back to this show anytime in the future the door's always going to be open for you dude oh thank you so much Errol I really appreciate it it's been great talking nostalgic baseball with you well you be brilliant today okay sir uh, it's a deal and, and hey Arrow. yes you want to have a you want to have a catch yeah, you know what? It's been a long. It's been many years since I've had done something like that. Let's uh, you go outside, and I'll be out there in about five minutes because I got to go steal a ball from the neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deal, man.